All right, everyone, so we're here, we're back for mystery review number 10. And this is the second sample from my mate who sent me a couple of samples to review on this vlog as sort of blind reviews. So I've got no idea what these are. Just did disastrously badly on the first sample. Hopefully that's kind of warmed up my nose for this second one here. So we will have a look, see what this one gives. This one is looking like a little bit of a darker color on it. Uh, maybe not quite dark gold, but between gold and dark gold, I would say. Um, in terms of the viscosity, we will have a look at that next. This one, I would say is looking about the same as the last one. And we know that the last one was 46%, even though I guessed it was 43. We're not going to dwell on the past. We're not going to dwell on the past too much. Yeah, that's looking about the same. Yeah, this one's quite different. There's a lot of really fresh fruitiness to this, a lot of citrusiness, a lot of apple. I did think I picked up a hint of peat there at the very beginning, but yeah, maybe it's kind of light sootiness. As I mentioned in uh, review number nine, the last one, uh, I know he's a bit of a fan of Ardmore, although I don't imagine all three are Ardmore. Peach, white peach in particular, this one's really, really fresh. Maybe even some sort of grapefruit or something. Really interesting. Quite a complex uh, nose, I'd say, to start. Um, Really nice nose, very, very nice nose. Really fresh, really a lot of fresh sort of citrusiness and sort of juiciness there. Lime juice maybe. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a taste. So this one's immediately much drier than the last one. Uh, much drier than I would have thought from the nose. I mean, the nose is really, really fresh, but it is very complex as well. The taste gives you a bit more of an, an idea of the age. I think this one is a little bit older especially the finish. The finish is nice and long. A lot of dryness, a sort of complex oak coming through. Still has this kind of citrusy elements as well though, um, which is really nice, very nicely balanced. Strength, um, somewhere sort of 46 to 50, I would say. Now more of this kind of creamy vanilla coming out on the nose. And almost some sort of sort of bourbon like um, vanilla sort of note I would say kind of herbal vanilla white pepper white grapefruit it's really nice not many whiskies that you get that kind of white grapefruity citrusy sort of taste and yeah quite a long finish it's quite nicely balanced it's not hugely complex on the finish I do think this one's a little bit peter. I'm, attempt I'm tempted to say Ardmore again because um, it's got that kind of freshness, that sort of lightly peatiness. But if it was, it would be an older one. And there aren't really many uh, older Ardmores at the moment. There's even some sort of rum-like notes in there as well, like molasses. And it's just a sort of slightly estery fruit. It's not quite tropical. I know what it is. It's this kind of um, Jamaican rum sort of note. I often find these Jamaican rums can be quite, um, it's going to sound slightly weird, but like mechanical almost. You get these sort of oily machine part sort of notes. Uh, not that I go around licking machine parts, but that's what this is kind of reminding me of. I think I'm going to go with knowing his preference for Ardmore. Uh, although we have had one Ardmore already. That this is Ardmore 20, which came out recently, uh, 2017, at a really fair price, 49.8% or something like that. Um, because it's got that kind of white grapefruit notes and it's got that very light smokiness that you get from that kind of longer aging from the peated whiskey. And it's got those kind of oaky notes that you get. Mm. Yeah. 
Ardmore 20, released 2017. That is what I'm going to go with. And we will have a look here with the reveal and see what whiskey this is and whether I am full of crap. Uh, oh my god, it isn't at all again! That's where the spiciness was coming from. Okay, so this is uh, a first in that it's a Japanese whiskey. The Yamazaki Distillers Reserve, 43%. Um, which is really interesting, it's really interesting. Um, I guess that's where you're getting this sort of slightly exotic sort of notes from. I can see it now, now that I go back to it, I can totally see that's what it would be, but I don't think I would have guessed that really, uh, that that was Japanese whiskey. Single malt, at least I was right on single malt. But Yamazaki normally isn't peated, so um, it's interesting you're getting a sort of slightly smoky notes from it, or I was anyway, just then. I have tasted this before, but only briefly, I think, at, uh, at a bar. Quite a nice one, but I don't think it's as good nearly as the um, the 12. I really liked the 12-year-old Yamazaki. Um, not so much the 18. The 18, I thought, was a bit uh, overblown and a bit hyped, but um, the 12 was lovely. This one isn't quite as good as that, but uh, still nice whiskey. Oh, God. Hopefully, number three will be a little bit better. I hope so. I'm letting my knowledge of his preferences get the better of me. I know I should have gone with Ardmore for the first one, and now I've guessed it for the second one, and it isn't. <laughs> I've kind of gone the wrong way with it, but oh well, that's the way these things go. But uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers for watching. Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully see you next time.